Hello everyone, my name is Arun and welcome to my channel. This series is a series of plotting tutorials using Matplotlib in Python. <coughs> and in this tutorial, we'll be looking at polar stream plots. Let's say you want to make a stream plot, uh, but instead of making that in uh, a Cartesian coordinate, sometimes you might be required to make it in a polar coordinate. Uh, for instance, something like this. You have a you have a plane, polar polar coordinate plane, and you want to have some streamlines that are drawn like this one. Just this, this is for just for an illustration. And in these kind of cases, polar stream plots are the ones that you need. And today we'll see how you can do this with an example. Now, uh, uh, first of all, I need NumPy and Matplotlib as it is. And uh, here I define instead of uh, this is not half domain. This is like the domain details so the I'm just taking a, a minimum radius to be 0 and the maximum radius of this domain to be at 4 units and the angle is between angle is between 0 and 2 pi and the number of points in the total number of points in the in the domain domain direction let them be 101 so I, d I calculate the radius and theta over here. Radius is linearly, sp I mean 101 points linearly spaced between uh, 0 and 4. And the theta is uh, 101 points linearly spaced between 0 and 2 pi as per this example. And uh, just like in the previous cases, we need to define grids, grid points for each. We need to define a grid for each and every coordinate, I mean each and every point. So I used, inst usually people go with x comma y here. Uh, in the intuitively one might go with a radius first and then theta next but uh, theta is acts more like a transverse direction so we use that as x so i use theta matrix first and then radius matrix first and define the coordinates using theta and theta and red theta and red okay and uh, and for just for a simple example over here let's make sure that the velocity is u and v that we are going to plot, let them be ones, just for a simple example, and then let the overall resultant velocity be as it is. Since the velocity about the tan, since v is going to be our tangential velocity, I mean uh, transverse velocity or tangential velocity, uh, so this is actually dimensionless. So to make it have a little bit of dimension, I'm just putting v, v I'm just multiplying v with the radius to give a to give a uniform dimension and i mean a meter per second dimension and then i'm squaring it up and then i'm using the pythagoras theorem to get the resultant velocities and here i just calculate the line with parameter nothing specific about it nothing specific about it here le uh, here i'm just um, using the subplot option and i put polar equals true making this plot to be polar and here is the main command that we're going to use for the stream plot at the bottom, we have the radius, a little bit of tweaks to set the upper and lower radius limits. Uh, tweaks for setting the number of uh, ticks mark, tick marks you want and the label positions and then the angle ticks. I set the grid and I set the grid and the title. This is actually polar stream, stream plots. Okay. And what else? Yeah, that will do. That will do for now. Now let's actually go into this. So first of all, uh, when you're looking at these, when you're looking, making a stream plot, um, you have to put the transverse velocity, I mean, uh, transverse coordinate. You have to put theta first and then radius. When you, mi when you mix them up, when you mix them up, what will happen is that the plot does not come very intuitively. So first, uh, so you have to keep in mind that you have to put theta first and then the radial, and then the radius, and then the radius uh, uh, coordinate second. Similarly, you put the uh, I mean uh, the tangential velocity, the transverse velocity, and then you put the radial velocity. So the notation is uh, transverse coordinate, radial coordinate, and then transverse tangential velocity and then radial velocity so that's the order that's the order you go with and then others are fairly straightforward you and you specify an arrow size you specify an arrow style for now i'm just going to keep this to be uh, a simple blue color 
and I, if I specify the density to be 1 then I'm, if the entire uh, stream plot will be divided into some small grids and in each grid the number of streamlines that are going to pass through will be specified as 1 and I'm specifying the line width with this keyword argument line width and when I plot this this is what I get I get a nice stream plot over here and uh, we can do a little bit more detail we can do a little bit more, more customization with this uh, for instance instead of uh, the instead of a single color you can actually go with uh, velocity uh, call velocity field to actually velocity field to make a multiple colors available and then we use this tail and then we can use color map to make a multiple colors available so such as this one so wherever the velocities are larger Wherever the velocities are larger, they'll use the color map accordingly. Color map accordingly. Wherever the velocities are smaller, the color maps will be like that. In this in this case, it will be better if we have the legend at the bottom. So what we do is uh, you type uh, you take the you take a hand I mean object out of it like stream equals ax1. You use this object and then at the bottom when you write plt dot color bar and then you put stream inside it you put stream dot lines. And you'll get a color bar next next to this figure, and that will give you an idea of what could what are the magnitudes of the velocities. Clearly, the velocities are larger at the at the at the, at the outer out the outer region, and the velocities are smaller at the inner region. That's very obvious over here. And uh, you can do a little bit more work with this. For instance, you can use the line width parameter that we defined on the top, which is L W. And uh, we can uh, instead of giving a constant line width over here, we can give a, a variable line width. Thereby, the higher velocities will have the higher thickness. Ooh. Oh, that's a lot. But you can clearly see that the velocities, uh, the low velocities at the interior are actually lower, so the thickness of these streamlines are smaller. But the velocities are substantial. Uh, thickness of the streamlines are actually larger as we go out on the outer. Um, what you can actually do is instead of 30, let me just put, uh, let's see, 3 will do, okay, let's, let's see what with 3 will do. Um, okay, fair enough, not bad. You can clearly see the velocities are actually thin, I mean the streamlines are actually thinner, thinner at the center, thinner at the interior, and the, velo and the velocities are thicker as, the, as you go towards the exterior, okay. Um, that's how that's how we go with the uh, line line thickness and of course instead of uh, making instead of having a, a uniform constant density like this you can have different you can have a higher value of density uh, it'll just make sure that the plots will have more number of lines and this will take more little more time than the usual to plot there we go you see earlier the lines you see earlier the lines were a little uh, lesser number now they have increased substantially substantially in number so based on this density you can actually uh, go adjust ac adjust accordingly and do your I mean adjust accordingly uh, for this case oneness itself is sufficient and if you're not convinced with uh, you know a uh, uniform density uniform density uh, streamline density along x direct I mean both the direction you can specify the directions along the tra x and y directions not x and y here it's theta and uh, ra radius directions so you give a tuple like this hopefully this should work yeah fair enough it works you can you can you can with this you can clearly set the number of streamlines that you want and based on that condition some streamlines will be neglected removed or removed or removed or kept as it kept as it is and what else um uh, this next uh, next thing uh, next thing is that uh, what you have to keep in mind is that there is no legend available for this and uh, instead of having a simple velocity plot like this one, let's actually go with a slightly higher, uh, slightly complicated velocity uh, in stream plot. This function over here is actually t took this from one of the stack exchange examples. Stack exchange examples. This will give an, a much more interesting plot. So let's do this. This is another example. Right now it doesn't make much. Right now it doesn't make much sense because of the line thickness, line thickness and all because the velocities are fairly large in number so instead of instead of the color map uh, i just remove the color map and then i remove the thickness line with thickness and give, set it to be default and i set the density to be constant and i set a constant color over here and i set a constant color over here 
you can get quite a lot of interesting figures you know what Hmm. Huh. Oh yeah, right. This color bar. Now since I don't have any color map, this color bar won't work. But now if I run this, there we go. You get a you get quite a nice, interesting um, streamlined plots like these. All right. Now that's all I have for you all in this video. Thank you for watching. Hope it the, hope this cleared up some of the questions that you might have regarding stream plots, polar stream plots. That is. Now I'll see you all next time in another interesting video and the next video will be on the stream uh, quiver plot, polar quiver plots. Until then, take care.